definitely coming for dinner. He called from the office. Hmm. Yeah, well, at least he's smart enough to know where to get a free meal. The idiots that I deal with at the office wouldn't know their ass from a hole in the wall. He likes my parties because he gets to network with other guests, not because he likes my cooking. I really wish that he would get off his ass and ask you to marry him. When Stanley gets to be partnered, that's when I want him. That is the pinnacle for Stanley. Honey, you need another man so you can stop worrying about mine. He's going to be here soon, and you are going to get burgers. So I need you to put a shirt on, or he's going to take you away and throw me in jail for being a terrible mother, and I will never see you again. Ah, oh, damn you, funny lady. Hey, don't swear. A mother swear. Yeah, well, she's a grown-up with a horrible job. She's allowed. Sunday. I know. What's the matter, Deli? I'm busting my ass at that insurance company so that my mother and Baron have a good home, and I'm always so angry. I'm wrecking this kid. This kid is the most important thing in the world to me, and I'm screwing him up. You're not screwing him up. You're just you. It's just been a bad day, honey. They're all bad days. There's broken femurs and dead bodies on the interstate, drill presses falling on people. How should I know what they're worth? What's a life worth? Too loud. I got room for you. Well, this is gonna be for good, you know. It's not like I need a little crash on the couch. I mean, I need a place to stay, yet. I got room. You sure about that? Man. Hey, I told you I had a lot of stuff now. You know, she picked up my Quicksilver album. Genuine vinyl, mind you, and winged it at me. What are you gonna do? Smell garlic? Uh, yeah, garlic is good for the skin, Stan. Yeah, I know, I know. I uh, heard a whole thing on NPR about the garlic. Uh, they grow a lot of it up in uh, Northern California. Garlic. It's good for my digestion. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, I love coming to these dinners, Delmar. It's really great. Really. I think I hear our guests arriving. Oh, oh just, just, just one second. Dumb. Just need to talk to you for one quick minute. Okay. okay. I have a proposition for you. Stanley. How'd you like to make $25,000? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Heard it before, Stanley. This is legitimate, <laughs> believe me. How would you like to be a surrogate mother? What? Are you serious? Yes. Do you want to know who it's for? My boss, Mr. Spinner. And what do you get out of it? Well. You know, if it happens, you know, a healthy kid and all. Spit it out, Stanley. I get made partner. Oh, hi, honey. Hi. Okay, then, now, don't you cry. Uh, 
it, God knows why Miss is such a problem. Lord just can't always make our children be what we need. You see, Mr. Ringo, the Borman Towers contract had so many contingency clauses. Son, if I had a shovel full of manure for every bit of good old boy malarkey that's carted in and out of the city in the name of contingency clauses, I could fill a damn football stadium with it. Don't you tell me about contingency clauses. Mm. Sorry I did that, dear. Why, uh, she's so mean to me, Sophia. She's not a mean streak, all right, Miss Bain. And I ain't one to speak ill of the dead. But maybe, just maybe, my daddy made her that way. I still think the Borman building is beautiful, don't you, Stanley? Yeah, uh, yeah I understand your point, Mr. Ringgold, and I'm not trying to defend it. Oh, it? don't but worry, you Stanley, I'm not mad at you. I'm just sick of this system that keeps good people down. Keeps people from doing what makes them happy. Oh, I'm just so lonely, Sophia. <laughs> I'm sorry your child ain't give you a grandbaby of your own to sit in your lap, Miss Bain. It's comfort. <laughs> Makes you feel young again. How many more Cadillacs you need, Jethro? Just stay in the car, Marlon. dog in there. This is heaven, Marlin. There ain't no guard dogs in heaven. You see the barbed wire on that fence, man? You wait here, okay? I'm gonna come back to the fence, and, and I'll tell you, if the 56 is still in there. What are you gonna do when you find it, man? Sit there and meditate for 12 hours? Maybe I will. But no matter what, I'll be there to claim it in the morning before they can crush it. Oh, man, I thought it was the 59 that was so great. You got one in your damn living room already, Jet. Actually, it's the 59 Eldorado Biarritz that's the best. Very rare. Very rare. Oh! Hey. Shh. Hey. You have to be quiet or you're gonna get us both thrown in jail. Now listen, just wait here for a second. I'm gonna pop up and take a quick peek. Mother's gotten into the burp in. Anything can happen now. Do you think Stanley will ever marry me? Oh, Hortense, what brought this on? She looks so old tonight. I don't want to eat. You know, I'm sick of not eating. Sick of waiting. He likes me thin. Do you love Stanley enough to have the last name Diggers pick up his dirty underwear and listen to his unruly core? Yes, of course I do. <laughs> Imagine with the right cocktail parties, I can make him a partner. I thought love had something to do with it. It does. He loves me. You know what? Just forget I said anything, okay? Uh, wait. Jetman! Jet, where the hell are you, man? Is this the caddy you want? Y'all wanna buy this car? 
Make me an offer. Are you the night watchman here? Do I look like a night watchman? No. Glad to meet you. I'm Martin, and this is my buddy uh, Jethro over here. I'm Moses. Moses Grady. Yeah, well, listen, uh, I'll buy the car, man. How much you want? Fifty. Right, how about a beer first, man? Hey, thanks. You, uh, are you staying here? It's all right. Kind of good to be outside after being inside so long. On the inside? Yeah, you know, prison. Well, if you've been in prison, how, how can this be your car? Old man Perkins is watching it for me. Now I got to give him $50 before I can haul it out of here. We can help you with that. What, the hauling or the 50? Both. Yeah, yeah, both. <laughs> Y'all must really like Cadillacs. Oh, man, you should see this guy's house. Yes, dearie. I did like that hay in the salad. It's good for my gallbladder. Put a little bourbon nuts, you know, will you? Yes, mother. Oh, that's beautiful, Delmar. Thank you. Stanley, when you get a second, could you help me in the kitchen? Sure. What'd you do there? Oh, please. Because I need Do you want your salad? No, I don't want my salad. So, uh, what's up? I made a decision, Stanley. Call me tomorrow and we'll discuss it. Well, well are you, you going to do it? Are you, you going to do it? Yeah, I'll do it. I ask you why you went to prison? No. Why'd you go to prison, man? Everybody does stupid stuff when they're young. I just happened to get caught. What'd you get caught for? They caught me stealing a Cadillac. <laughs> Trying to take a girl on a date. I was gonna take it back. No, wait, wait, wait. You were gonna take it back? Yeah, take it for a drive, drop her off, and take it back. <laughs> oh, man. I'd roll it out the driveway, crank it up, and take off. That's crazy, man. Crazy, Moses. Yeah, pretty slick, eh? At least it was a Cadillac. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Kitty, let me get the chili bear. Do you play the big one? Side of salsa. All right, Kitty Cat, I'm gonna have the menudo uh, lingua special and have Jimmy put a little bit of the cheese, uh, pepper cheese on top. How old's the beef stew? Yesterday. All right, I have the beef stew and, uh, Home fries. And home fries. Okay. So anyway, I teach uh, part-time over at State. There's a couple of anthropology classes. And, uh, you know, I work on caddies just for fun, just you know, keep my head together. Marlon here is a big-time writer. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I uh, write term papers. Mm -hmm. A lot of writers in the joint. <laughs> Typewriters clacking all night. You know, they use a the computer, a little less noise. You know Delmar wants to open a restaurant someday. That's a damn fine idea. Well, she already has a name for it. The Hungry Bachelor's Club. <laughs> you should hear some of her ideas. I mean, she's really an artist at heart. Miss Bain, you feeling all right? You wait right here tonight. Take your time. Oh. Right. You suppose Miss Youngblood could play Amazing Grace? <laughs> she always takes requests. I'll ask her for you. You just rest your weary bones.
it out, Moses. Our humble abode. Yeah, maybe having them. That's, that's definitely good. Look in here. You want a cup of coffee, Moses? Yeah, sure. More beer in the fridge, Marlon, if you need any more. Well, don't mind if I do. That cup's clean on the inside, I swear it. Thank you. Uh, uh, looks like your lead's fried. You know electrical? Jethro, I'm sorry to call so late. Why? What time is it anyway? Uh, nearly 11. Jethro, somebody just died over here. Somebody just died? Of one of Mother's friends. Uh, she died on the couch after dinner. I called her daughter and left a message on her machine. You want me to come over? You could say something nice for her, and then we could call the police. Oh, Jethro, thank God you're here. Marlon, be careful, Marlon. Oh, see, Daisy. Hey, Jelly, baby. This is Moses. Moses, this is my sister, Delmar. Uh, how do you do, Moses? We found him in the back seat of a 56 over at Perkins. Actually, I should say he found us. Oh, it must have been a Cadillac. Uh, where is she, Del? Yeah, it was a Cadillac. Yeah, where's this dead lady, Del? Jethro! Jethro! You're back! Oh, yeah, Mom, I've been back about 13 years now. I wish you had told me, Jethro. A mother suffers, you know. Hey, sorry about that, Mom. Listen, is this your friend here on the couch? Mrs. Bainbridge. That's her. She's dead. Hey, you got any beer in these fancy shindigs here? Uh, Marlon, you might have to help Jethro. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Jethro's, he's the, the priest king, you know. Come to those. I exercise the commercial demons. Have you had anything to eat lately? Do you want some coffee? No, I'm the great hungry bachelor. Hey, Dell, I need some corn and also a pitcher of water. Canned corn, popcorn? Can's okay. Listen, what you guys have for dinner? A uh, Cornish hen. You got any left? I made an extra bird for tomorrow. So I'm gonna need that too. Now, Marlon, I need you to represent the rain god, Shaq. And Moses? You would represent the sky god, Ixama. That'd be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy, you can cook. Is that tarragon I smell? Yeah. The uh, birds are baked fresh with ground lamb and rice stuffing. Do you cook? Oh, yeah. Harmony, where I came from, he taught me. He was a chef. We cooked a lot. Well, you never can tell what you might find in the back of the Cadillac. Do you want this hot? Doesn't matter. Canned corn. I don't eat no canned corn. Hortense likes canned corn. Hortense. Hey, Hortense is here. Hey, he's in love with Hortense. Who is Hortense? She's my best friend. She lives here with me and my mother. Aye, Hortense. I want you. Yeah, come to me tonight. Uh, All right. Hey, hey, Marla, hey. What are you doing? You're drunk. Hey, Go Stanley, on. my buddy, you. Ooh, you still Marlon? No, for lip. Marlon. Yeah. I'm ready for you over here. All right. I'll be back. Come on. Uh, 
I am your ready god buddy. I am your ready chap. I'm your ready god buddy. Right. What's happening? From what I gather, Jethro wants to give the lady a service. Oh, a service now? My poor old Miss Baines. She never really had a church, you know. She never joined. It's too bad. Everybody should have a church in his life. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, would you gather around the couch, please? I represent Kukul Khan, Quetzalcoatl namesake priest king of the ancient Maya. Is this heathen? Maya believe that there is an afterlife, but that it is within ourselves, the ones left behind, to carry Mrs. Bainbridge's spirit with us in life. So, before she gets pumped full of chemicals for marketing purposes, I would like to offer her her freedom. Let me hear about my mother. She's in here of wind, water, and fertility. We are one in this room. Shaq, the rain god, and Azama, the sky god, with the capacity to produce and create and unite in our sameness. The feathered snake that goes in the waters. The ripple, born of wind and water. are getting cold. Do you want me to put them in the oven? Yes, please. Good afternoon, Miss Youngblood. Please come in. Nice to meet you, Mr. Spinner. It's nice to meet you, too. Please sit down. Thank you. I understand you're looking for a womb to rent and an egg to buy. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, easy does it, Miss Youngblood. Stanley Diggers has given you the highest recommendation in this rather delicate subject. Mr. Spinner, both parties hope they will benefit. Uh, that is the nature of the perfect business deal. Miss Youngblood, this is a preliminary interview. My wife, of course, has the final say, and I can assure you that this has not been the easiest decision. I do understand, and it is an immense decision on my part as well. When you came in, I was quite surprised. You are everything Diggers described. This here is a picture of my mother. Oh. She recently passed away. I'm sorry. She's a handsome figure. Yes, a handsome figure. And I could hardly help but notice a close physical resemblance in you. Well, thank you. I'm always complimented when a, a man says that I remind him of his mother. Really? May I be frank? Mrs. Spinner is barren. We have tried for years, unsuccessfully, to have a child. Now they tell me she is out of eggs, Miss Youngblood. It nearly destroyed her. I, on the other hand, am healthy as a horse, which leaves me with but one choice if I am to continue the spinner gene pool. We want a child, Miss Youngblood. We need a child. Mr. Spinner, these are my terms, if I'm acceptable to you, your wife, and your doctor. I expect $25,000 if I conceive and continue full term, and a second $25,000 payable at birth, son or daughter. If for some reason the child is unacceptable, 
handicapped or, well, these things can happen. You are not obligated to pay the second $25,000, and I will keep the child. Essie? Well, under current law, I think that I'm only obliged to pay for medical care and board, Miss Youngblood. Mr. Spinner, you are paying for an heir. I could charge a million dollars. A life. What's that worth to you? To me, it represents an opportunity to change my life. And yours. Don't no, Proctor, get down to Grady Hospital. We got a fractured pelvis named Adamson that needs a handful. Lassiter, you will get three grand out of me for that slap neck when hell freezes over. How much are you kicking back to your doctor? If he is a doctor. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Youngblood here. This is Mr. Spinner's office? Yes. You've got a meeting yes. with Mrs. Um, Spinner at the tennis club. Tennis club. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. You'll be there? Thank you. Yes, I'll be there. Okay, thank you. Why shouldn't I get $50,000? For having an attorney's baby? You want to have an attorney's baby? Yeah, and I want to marry him first. I just wish you could hear yourself. I just think it's a terrible thing to do so you can open a restaurant. Yeah, well, you know, I can think of worse. And I hate to say this, but guys like Spinner and Stanley do worse every day. Stanley brokered the deal. <sighs> they make me sick. Stanley said that Spinner's been asking a lot of questions about you. Yeah, and Stanley's been answering them all. He's a great pimp. Well, it sounds to me like you're the one. <sighs> Look, it might not even happen. I mean, I still have to go meet Mrs. Spinner tomorrow. Who knows? She, she might not want anything to do with me. But this money, you know, this, this, this money could set us free. Mom, Baron, and me. Thank you. Mrs. Spinner? Oh, sit down, please. You, you, you must be Delmore? Yes. <laughs> I'm Betty. Nice to meet you. Uh, sorry, I'm a little late. Very pretty. Thank you. Did you care for something to drink? I'll have another one, George, darling. Uh, soda water, please. Yes, ma'am. You're not drinking? No, I've, I've had a long day. One drink would do me in. Uh, something to eat? Can I get you some? Oh, no, thank you. I have folks at home waiting for me to cook. Oh, you cook? I can't cook. I hate to, really. I... Hair will tell you that, too. Cook. She can't have babies. Why? Well, she can't even throw a very good party. I'll have your baby, Betty. I do like your style, Miss Delmar. You are smart. My sugar wants himself a smart baby. Here you are. Well, I've earned this. I've been working out all day. Jethro thinks a lot about death. Why? You know, something happened to him, Mose. He's a grad student down in Guatemala. His girlfriend was murdered. Yeah, she had him involved in some kind of political thing, and, well, he's just lucky he didn't get killed himself, you know? You know, man, I don't mean to sound cold, but everybody loses somebody. This is different, man. I mean, he really loves It ain't her. no different. Everybody feels pain. 
Jethro lost his girlfriend. I lost Harmony. You're gonna lose somebody one day. Maybe you already have. That's just the way it is. Harmony? Harmony. Who's that? He was my friend. Hey, guys. Hey, Jetman. Yeah, you had a call, that psychotic Missy with the wild eyes. Her name's Missy? Yeah. Missy. She probably wondered what the hell you were doing cavorting over her dead mother. Well, then I'll tell her very simply. Yeah, a pagan right. I understand what you were doing. Thank you, Moses. Hey, y'all, I'm gonna fix some stew for dinner. How about that? Stew? That sounds good, man. You got her number? Yeah. Missy. Now, why do you call her neurotic freak? Well, she's a cokehead for one thing. Come on, man. Her mom just died. Oh, all right. All right. That means he likes her, Moses. Hi, Missy, this is Jethro Youngblood calling you back. Let me offer you that there is no time in death, only the memories and the flights and the landings of the living. I'm sorry for the passing of your mother, and I was, I was just trying to do my part, you know, just trying to help her with her flights and her landings. <laughs> I did it for you, and I did it for your memories. May they be peaceful and gentle on your soul. What? I'm uh, gonna get started on that stew. Hey, man, Moses is gonna make us some stew. Yeah, he's gonna save us. I know he is. That's why he's staying here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna write his life story. Matter of fact, I might just tell him about mine. Help you? Just going to take a look. I like making babies. In Beijing, I work and work for boring babies. Here, I help making babies. Makes me happy. Oh. Oh, good, very good. You have a pain? No. Let's take a look-see. Oh, look at that cervix. You're a good baby maker. so sweet I'd never seen. Marlon. <laughs> Thank you. A flower so keen to make a bee preen. I'm wearing an apron. Well, I'm not gonna attack you or anything, Hortense. I just, um, I came by to apologize for the other night. You know, because I was kind of drunk the other night. And to Stanley? Oh, no, no. I'll never apologize to him. I just... Can I come in now? All right. Come on in the kitchen for a few minutes. All right, a few minutes. That's all I ask. Oh, that smells good. What is that? What you cooking, good looking? A chicken. Deli's out late. I'm baking a chicken for Stanley. A little chicken for Stanley. Stanley around? Not yet. Mm. Marlon, why do you have to make an ass of yourself? You know, you could really be a nice person when you let yourself. Why do I make why do I make an ass of myself? Hmm. Leftover fits of childhood perversion? <laughs> so where's the big nut and the little nut? Upstairs, watching television. Mm. 
Whatever happened to Madeline? Madeline. Hmm. Good old Madeline, yeah. More fits of childhood perversion. She dumped me. <laughs> Kicked me out. As the saying goes, one woman's too many and all women are not enough. You look good in pink. Pink looks good on Hortense. The real pinkness of you. You're a sex maniac. That's what you are. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what a say? Why? Marlon, what did you really come here for? I see you. Really. Where's Tonto? Out rescued another Cadillac with Moses. The color man? Colored, colored man. What, what year are you living in? Well, Tess, how can you be with a man that's got no heart? All right, so he's got a big job and a condo. It's not everything. Hello? Hi, Hortense? Yes, honey, it's me. I can't come over. My stomach hurts. No. Oh, you poor thing. Do you want me to come over? No. Uh, that's okay. My mom's bringing me to the Oh, my. Oh, you Stanley. Mm -hmm. Stanley, I'm sorry that you feel bad. Can I see you tomorrow? Oh, uh, no, I'm just Are you sure? Yeah. I'm really sure. Okay. Well, I hope you feel better. Oh, it's all right. It's, it's all right. Okay. Bye. So is, uh, Stanley canceling? Yes. I'm sorry. You know, I'd, I'd be honored to join you for dinner. <sighs> Ta-da! Oh, my, oh, my, that looks beautiful. It's Deli's recipe. Mm. Looks better than anything I've ever seen Deli cook. You really think so? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Help yourself. Don't need it. I could do so much for him. I have done so much for him. I should be used to this. I mean, sometimes I just want to scream oh. at him and make him see that I am not his enemy, that I'm his partner. And... Stanley ate like that, he would throw up. <laughs> you must have a cast iron stomach. <laughs> that ain't all, baby. <laughs> Why is it that men like you, who are so... Sensational. Spontaneous. Sensual. No. So bad. <laughs> and you're the ones that women want. want. Yeah, I want. <sighs> Aren't you hungry, too? Moses, you from around here? I think so. Huh? Well, they found me down at Grady Hospital. You were born at Grady? That left in the stairwell. You know what that means? Yeah, it means I grew up in foster homes. Did you ever find your mom and dad? Nope. Well, that means that your mom could be any woman and your dad could be any man. Any black man. All right, whatever. My point is, you could be bumping into your brothers and sisters all the time and not even know about it, you know? 
I mean, you could be the son of an African prince for all you know. You could be Dr. Martin Luther King's love child. Man, you crazy. What is that, a BMW? You heard it? Bad vow. Can I help you? Um, I'm looking for Jethro. Jethro Youngblood. You found him. Oh. Sorry, I didn't recognize you. I'm Missy. Missy Bainbridge. Oh, yeah. Come on in. Doors around back. So I'm gonna go get cleaned up, okay? Hey, what, what what should I talk about? I don't know. Tell him one of your prison stories or something. Hey, you ain't looking so good, honey. Here, why don't you sit down? Thanks for the beer. Who are you? Oh, uh, I'm Moses. Sky guard at Zom at your mama's last rites. Step on a crack, you break your mama's back. Say what? I used to step on cracks to break my mama's back. You're the sky god? I'm nothing. Oh, <laughs> well, you look like something to me. Sorry about your mama. She was a real nice lady. I mean, I mean, I never met her myself, but everybody says she was real nice. She's all messed up, saying she ain't nothing. Nothing. Did Sophia tell you what my mama said? Sophia? No, I didn't talk to Sophia that night. She said my mother died of a broken heart. I broke it. I did. Don't you want to know how I broke my mother's heart? Not really. You step on a crack. You break. Ain't nothing wrong with feeling low. It's called grief. But believe me, honey, time heals all. Not for me. What's so bad you can't get over it? Bad memories. Sometimes you got to hit the bottom to clean yourself out. The harmony taught me that. 
Harmony? Friend of mine. He's dead. Maybe he's lucky. Ain't nothing lucky about dying. He taught me that, too. Listen, when I went to prison, I was bad. Mixed up. Shoot, I was lucky I got caught. Otherwise... Otherwise what? I'd have done something worse. I was so bad. I wished my mother would die. You didn't kill her. It was her time. Earth calling Missy. Come in, Missy. This is Earth calling Missy. Come in, Missy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nice in here. In fact, it's damn nice. But you've been in here just a little bit too long. <laughs> Come on, when are you gonna come out and join the living? When I die. Hey, you're not gonna die. I'm going over to my sister's house for dinner and I'd like it very much if you would come with us. What do you say to taking a shower? Putting on some clean clothes? Uh, You'll feel better. Get out. Feeling any better? No. You want me to get in there with you? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> the old golden jewel. Just one more little Hortense kiss. No, no, come on. no more. Look, you have got to promise not to tell anyone. Not Jethro, not Delmar, not anyone. I am semi-engaged to Stanley, you know that. Well, then you better get out of this van before anybody sees you then, huh? Stanley is the kind of man I'm supposed to marry. Yeah, I understand. I don't know what to tell you, Merlin. You love him? Yes, of course I love him. You know, love is dangerous and reckless, Hortense. <laughs> you don't love him. You just want safe and in control. That is you, Marlin. Dangerous and reckless. We don't have to hang out. Just take off. No, it's okay. I want to take one last look before it gets sold. What were we saying last night? There was something you wanted to tell me? Yeah. Listen, I just want to tell you that you, know, you don't have to tell me anything. You don't have to share any secrets or any of that stuff. You don't, you don't owe me that. I like that Marlon calls you Jetman. <laughs> uh, in fact, everything about your house makes me feel well again. Well, I'm glad. It's nice having you there. I was adopted when I was a baby, and my parents were in their 40s. I was quite the adored child. 
What I do is I disassociate. That's the, uh, that's the term the shrinks use from being alive. Did a lot of cocaine, had a lot of sex. Well, you're not sick, are you? I mean, you don't have a... Oh, no, no. It's nothing like that. I'm, uh, I'm not supposed to feel bad about what happened to me. I was a victim. My dad, uh, forced me to have sex with him when I was a kid, and, uh, it went on for a couple of years, and my mom never did anything to stop it. Maybe she didn't know, or maybe she didn't want to know. <sighs> I understand that. I wanted my father to die. And then he died. And I was awful to my mother because she never did anything to stop it. And I wanted her to die, and then she died. And now they're both gone. I'm real sorry, Missy. Hey, it's gonna be okay. Hi, come on in. Thanks for coming. How could I resist? I love cooking. How's everything at Jethro's? Everybody coming tonight? Oh, they'll be fasting all day. Mm, looky here. Mm. You know how many turkeys I've cooked? Hundreds. We used to get the leftovers from grocery stores after Christmas and Thanksgiving. <clears throat> yeah. Me and Harmony used to stuff them with everything we could find. Cornbread, sausage, apples, anything, even meatloaf. Mmm. Yeah, I do want this one to be special. So, has uh, Jethro fallen for Missy? Hey, you can tell me, I'm his sister. Well, he and Marlon are moving our stuff out of her apartment into the house. Let's see, I say about 12, 15 pounds. Yeah, I always tent it as a standing rust. No, it makes it too dry. You got to let the juices run into the breast, not away from it. <sighs> Man, I can't help it. I'm in love with it. This is the real thing, baby. Come on. How many times the two of you been together? I lost count, man. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> She's relentless. You never think it. What about Stanley? She makes love to me like a banshee and she runs off to Stanley. Got me crazy. <laughs> you were already crazy. Yeah, speaking of crazy, man, you know what Delmar's up to? Yeah, she's having another one of those hungry bachelor's things. Oh, man, Hortense told me she's gonna uh, become a surrogate mother. <laughs> and she's already a surrogate mother to you, me, my mom, Hortense whole office and her ex-husband. Oh, man, Jed, I mean, literally, she's gonna have Stanley's boss's kid for some serious cash. What the hell are you talking about? Hey, Bear. <laughs> Time to get ready to go. Your daddy's gonna be here soon. Hi, Mom. What a great house you made. Grandma helped. I'm gonna run down to the store right quick. Do you know any card tricks? Well, let's see here. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Tell me when to stop. Four of diamonds. It is four diamonds. <laughs> you know, I am. Um, I'm feeling. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I feel sexy. <laughs> really. Uh, couldn't be that hormone shot Dr. Boo gave you this afternoon, could it? Um, maybe. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Yeah. Maybe it is the shot. You know, I, something's happening. I, I feel good. Fly more for the butterfly and take off on a breeze. Mm -hmm. And do the things you please. In the land where dollar bills are falling off the trees. On a dreamer's holiday. of scrambled stars and for luncheon you'll be munching rainbow candy bars you'll be living out of mode on jupiter or mars on a dreamer's holiday hey grip what are you talking about man you people stay away from this house how do you get out of the way hey, hey, stop it stop it right you now stay away from this house Who are you? Who are you? Hey, Dad, you want to see some card tricks that Moses taught me? They're from prison. Are you crazy, woman? I should take the boy away forever. Get in the car. Get in the car. Cool it, Abib. Take it easy. Bye, sweetheart. I'll see you tomorrow. You were married to that? Miss Sophia. Oh, thank you. You know, she died right there on that couch. Right there where her daughter's sitting. Yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. I will never forget that look on her face. Oh. Mr. Ringo. I don't know Ringo. <laughs> Moses, they put you right to work around here, huh? Thank you, Moses. Well, let's see you get you some of these quesadillas. <laughs> oh, I've had some already. <laughs> oh, I think I hear the approach of the Marlin Mobile. Yeah, I thought I heard you coming. Hello there. Ooh, smells good in here. Hey, uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> my, my, it smells absolutely delicious in here. I do know how to throw a dinner party. Where is Stanley? Uh, Stanley's gonna be a little late again. Well, hello, Hortense. Hello, Marlin. Oh, you look beautiful. Thank you. Good enough to eat. <laughs> um, Missy? I'm Hortense. Oh, hi, nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you. You have? Mm-hmm. Marlin, he talks about you all the time. <laughs> Such a beautiful baby. Interest rates are falling again, Stanley, my oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any predictions this month? Oh, I'm sure. Recession. It always happens. Interest rates drop, people spend their savings. No, nothing but trouble comes out of that. I read a piece about that in USA Today. Yeah, good soup, isn't it? Bisque, Marlin. Yeah, soup, bisque, whatever. Fresh apple pie, big brother? Are you really going to be a surrogate mother? Who told you? I can't believe you'd do something like that, Dell. I mean, for what? For money? <laughs> well, sure it's for money. I mean, it's still a free country. And it's none of your business. Well, no, it's the Earth's business. Well, the Earth's business, huh? Well, I'm a goddess. See, I, I can do this if I want to. You know, what do you think Dad would say about something like this? You know, selling off a child like you're some capitalist cow. I am not selling a child, Jethro. I am donating an egg and renting a womb. And you know what? Actually, I, I think he'd be rather proud spreading his genes about. You know, it's funny, Dell. Somehow 50,000 bucks doesn't really sound like a donation to me. Look, I have Mom and Baron to take care of. I'm killing myself with that insurance company to afford it all. And, and it's not like you do anything at all to help us. There's a lot more to life than Cadillacs, Jethro. Why don't you get out of the garage?
got to be another way to make money, Dell. Yeah, there is. You want to use the money to open a restaurant. Oh, man. It's exploitative, Dell. I'm doing a favor. Stanley's boss's wife is barren. She needs a baby, and this way she can keep swilling her gin while I do all the work. Huh. So you've got no problem giving up a child that you've carried inside you for nine months, huh? Look, I am taking this very seriously. You are the romantic. I'm a romantic. Yeah. I guess I am. Marlon looks good tonight, don't you think? I mean, really, he looks good. Sure, Hortense. You know, Marlon was playing footsie with me under the table, and Stanley had no idea what was going on. <laughs> Why don't you leave the dishes, okay? We'll do them after dinner. Honey, what's wrong? Do me a favor, just serve this, okay? Please, Telly. Please? Something wrong? never had no family. Um, well, uh, what I'm trying to say is thanks for including me with y'all's family today. It really means a lot to me. Moses, I had a great time with you. I'm just glad you came over. <sighs> Good night, Delmar. It's important for you to relax, make your nutrition through, like you have a happy dream with your flowers and birds. Will this take long? No, quick and easy. You take a pill this morning? Yes. Best for you to think. Good, happy dream, okay? Best for your baby, too. Yes, Monica. Dr. Wu's on the line. Put her on, put her on. Mrs. Benner? Hello, Doctor. You're gonna have baby. You happy? That is wonderful news, Doctor. That is absolutely tremendous news. I want to congratulate you. Thank you so much. What a job. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Bye-bye. I did it, Mama. I really did it. Monica, send him diggers right away. <laughs> no deal, Myers. No way we settle for extension flex or whiplashes for that kind of money. Why don't you call me back when you're ready to play right? That was quick. You ready to deal? Miss Youngblood? Yes, this is Delmar Youngblood. This is Dr. Wu. Hello, Dr. Wu. The test positive. You know what that means? Yes. I understand. You have baby. Thank you, doctor.
How is everyone this bright and sunny morning? Hey, morning, sweetheart. You want some pancakes? With maple syrup? Yeah, with maple syrup. Cool. Well, Mother's in a great mood this morning, Hortense. Nice that someone in the house is getting some. Oh, he's a very neat man, that Mr. Ringgold. You know he was looking for an iron to press his ties? Yeah, isn't he wonderful? <sighs> Pancakes, Hortense? Okay. Yes, please. She'll just throw them up. Oh, no, she won't, baby. She doesn't do that anymore. She's got her attorney now, right, Hortense? Now that he's made partner, things are moving right along, right? I think so. Marlon? Oh, I'm going crazy. Why are you going, going crazy, Marlon? You, oh, you're driving me, you're driving me crazy. I know. God, I want you so bad. I close up the shop in 10 minutes. Why don't you meet me out back in the van? Oh, no. It's not that easy, Hortense. See, I'm still trying to figure out if I want to be the lover of a woman who's sucking up to a man with no lips. Well, excuse me, Marlon. You're right. It's not that easy. Stanley and I have been dating for three years, and we're planning on getting married. You've been sneaking around on now for months, Hortense. It's got me down. It's got me way, way down. I'm sorry, Marlon. I don't know what to tell you. You and me, marry me. Stanley? Who is it? Who do you think it is, Stanley? I've got to talk to you. Uh, you know, I gotta get to the office. I'm really running late. This won't take long. I hate it when you watch me shave. Where do we stand? Ow, ow! You're a partner now, Stanley, and I want to order the rings just like we agreed. And I'll still pay half just like we said. My mother is very sick. This is a really bad time. I can't believe you're bringing this up. Stanley, I know it's hard for you to do two things at once, so I'm going to make this simple. Are we going to get married? You know, now that I'm partner, I have to work harder than ever before. This is a very oh, big responsibility. Stanley! Well, I, I, I can't think. Honey, I could help you. I could help you by taking care of you, by making you dinners and, and making sure that you get enough sleep. I could be your partner. I don't know. I... I'll even take care of your mother. I don't think I'm ready. You're not ready? You're not ready? Three years, Stanley! Now, you know what, Stanley? You are the idiot! And I am tired of waiting around for you! Ah! We're through! You understand. It's really over this time. You'll come around. He always comes around. We've been through this before. No, he's a partner now. That's what I've been waiting for. We should have set the date. You know, if he doesn't know that you are the best thing that has ever happened to him. Ice cream? No. You are the greatest woman. No, I am the stupidest woman, Delmar. But I can't even fit into my pants. <laughs> yeah, neither can I. <laughs> Come on. What do you say? We, we'll go to Jets? I need to talk to Moses. We'll have some fun. <sighs> Marlon. Yeah. Marlon. <laughs> he asked me to marry him. What did you say? Nothing. 
I didn't say anything. <laughs> Come on, we're going. Let's go. We're going right now. Isn't the Avon ladies calling? Hortense, the goddess of my heart. This place looks great. What yeah. happened in here? Well, uh, a little woman's touch, you know. Missy's doing a little redecorating. Is Jethro here? He's, um, he's at school. He's got Missy with him. Moses? He's out back at the barbecue. Crazy the other day when uh, you wouldn't give me an answer, you know. I started writing again. Marlon, please leave me alone. I can't, Hortense. All right, don't you understand? It's not. Think, Cordy. Moses, can we talk business? Okay, let's talk business. Not that kind of business. <laughs> Would you go into business with me? I, I, I'm opening a restaurant soon, and to tell you the truth, I don't want to do it without you. What do you say? Like the ribs are ready. Really? <laughs> How's Stanley? You know, when I first met you, you were very thin. The night my mother died. Yeah. I thought you were so beautiful. And I wanted to be thin, really thin like you. Now I would be beautiful and Stanley would marry me. I was doing a lot of cocaine. I was killing myself then. Hortense! Hortense, look at this. See this? It's my novel. I got 98 pages here. I know it's... Yeah. I'll see you guys later. All right. It's, it's, it's not finished yet. All right, but I know I'm on my way. But I wrote it. I wrote it from my heart, you know? And it's good. It's good. Can you read me some of it? was a man named Marlon. <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> you look tired, Bumblebee. There's so much paperwork. Uh, applications, inspections, insurance. All I want to do is open up a nice little eccentric restaurant. Like me. Ma, you are not a restaurant. But, yes, you are eccentric. That's what I meant. Russo! Hey, Ma. Russo, you're late. Mom. Yes, Bumblebee? Russell's daddy's name is Jethro. Well, I know that. My little boy. I just sometimes I forget. Because I want to. Listen, I brought you some table decorations for the restaurant. Yeah. Just some stuff I had sitting around. What? <laughs> Jet, 
How are you ever going to live without this? I want you to have them, Del. Thank you. They're perfect. <laughs> feet are killing me. I miss my son. Stop worrying. The restaurant is blessed, I'm telling you. Now, every dime has been spent, Moses. Every dime. If Mr. Ringgold hadn't offered to buy the food, we couldn't even open. What'd he get? <sighs> Fifteen buffalo steaks, twenty chickens, ten salmon, and two cases of wine. See, what I tell you, we're blessed. Oh, wait, I got something for you. Da -da. <laughs> what is this? Open it up. Okay. <laughs> See? <gasps> you put a different menu in there every day. Ready? Oh, yeah. We're ready, Deli. We're ready, Deli, baby. Okay. Mr. Ringle, would you open the door? Yeah. Thrill to do, lady. She needs him. It's a perfect business marriage. You think they're uh, getting it on? Is that all you ever think about? Mm -hmm. <sighs> the ladies, thank you, sir. If you please. <laughs> yes. You? Everything just looks so nice. Don't you think so, Mr. Ringo? This place looks funky, huh? Hi, Sophia, Amy. Oh, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good evening, the Diggers Party. Oh, this way, please. Now you can see the artist in her, Betty. Now, our baby's gonna be an artist. That is Delmar's mother playing piano. Oh, look, I think I see our itty bitty artist done in that little frock oh. she's wearing. Mrs. Spinner? Stanley. Hi, uh, Mrs. Spinner. Pleasure, this is Dolly. Hello, Dolly. Stanley, Mr. Hi. Spinner. Hello, Miss Youngblood. Well, it looks like our little loaf is baked. You should see the charming room we've got for the little fellow. 
the ultrasound says it's a girl, Mr. Spinner. Ah, well, don't believe in Western medicine, Miss Youngblood. I know it's a boy. Oh, that's a boy. Excuse me. She's carrying She is a boy. Hi, good evening. Thanks for coming. Oh, boy. I'm tired, girl. You gotta take it easy. Nothing's turning out like I planned, Moses. What are you talking about? It was amazing. Everybody loves the place. It's not that. What? Delmar. I'm keeping the baby, Moses. I can't give her up. I wanted to tell you, I tried, I tried, and I, I was afraid that you'd leave, you know, and um, I wanted you to stay. You want me to stay? I really want you to stay. Listen, it might be his baby, but it's yours too. And I love that baby's mama, you understand? Contract, Moses. Listen, everything's gonna be fine. I'll get you out of that contract. I have to find twenty-five thousand dollars. Well, then we'll just find twenty-five thousand dollars. You must be the warrior, Othello. No, baby, I'm Moses. I'm gonna take you to the promised land. <laughs> Mr. Ringold, me and Delmore have been wanting to talk to you about something. Oh, it, it, it was Hortense that flooded the bathroom, not me. <laughs> it's nothing like that, Mr. Ringold. Oh, oh good. Because uh, Hannibal and I have been wanting to talk to you. Well, you go first. Good. Um, uh, Hannibal and I have been talking about um, shacking up. Shacking up? Mr. Ringold, you're talking about my mother. Oh, yes, I know. I, I guess I am. We've been talking about getting a place of our own. And it's not something I want to do without you knowing. Well, it's just that it's just a surprise. I... Well, we thought you'd need the space around here. With the baby coming and the restaurant doing so well. That's very nice of you. So? Your turn. Well... <clears throat> We were wondering if maybe you might be interested in a little investment opportunity. Oh. Tell me more. My secretary tells me you have something of a personal nature to discuss with me, Mr. Grady. What can I do for you? Nice office. Yes, yes, it is. Nice flag. It is indeed a nice flag, yes. And what is this? Twenty-five thousand dollars. It's being returned. Delmar Youngblood wants to keep her baby. She changed her mind. We have a signed contract, Mr. Grady. It's quite binding. You know, I ain't no big-time fancy lawyer like you, Mr. Spinner, but I, I do know a fair amount of jailhouse law. And I doubt that contract to you is a stand up in a court of law, and I think you know it. She is dreaming if she thinks I'm going to give up that easily. I have the resources to tie this up in the courts for years to come. The kid will be in college before this is all over, Mr. Grady. I know one thing. You best leave Delmar Youngblood and her baby alone. Don't threaten me, you... Goodland? Maybe you ain't so smart after all. I'm not threatening you. Just giving you some good advice. Damn good advice. And I ain't just whistling Dixie.
About my baby? What the hell you doing here? This is a big day and I want to see our child. I thought they gave you your money back. They sure did, but I just might give it back and take my baby. You can't do that. I have a contract. Nobody made us sign it. What's the marshal for? Just in case. Case for what? Just in case Delmar's boyfriend gets any ideas. You know he's on parole now, don't you? If he but raises a finger, I'll have him back in jail Mr. where he belongs. Spinner. Do you understand me? You know what, Mr. Oh, Spinner? It's a girl. <laughs> Delma and the baby are doing fine. Oh, this is so exciting. Jimmy, I want to see my granddaughter. Let's go meet him. Excuse me, I want to see my child. Thank you. Daddy is here. Oh, really? Meet Harmony, young like Grady. <laughs> oh, my lord. <laughs> oh, a butterfly. Oh. oh. She's beautiful. She's just darling, Miss Elmar. Betty? Betty! She is beautiful. I'm Uncle Jet. Welcome to Planet Earth. <laughs> oh, she's beautiful, Delmar. Yeah. Just like her mama. See? 